and welcome to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Today we're going to be restoring a Hot Wheels Redline Peeping Bomb. I want to thank one of my subscribers, Keith, for suggesting this build. Let's get started. Let's start out by drilling the car. You're going to drill out the post using a small diameter drill. Drill past the mushroom portion of the post. Flip the car over and repeat the process on as many rivets as you have in the car. Once that's done, then we're going to use a larger diameter drill to drill out the mushroom portion of the post. Please be careful not to drill past the base of the car, just enough to release the body from the base. Now that the posts are drilled out, let's take apart the car. Separate the engine with the post, take off the body, take out the windshield and the interior, and the little headlight flap. We're looking at the body and we realize that we've got to smooth out the post connecting the body to the base. The engine, the same thing. We're going to have to smooth out that post also. Windshield doesn't look too bad. It's got some scratches in it, which means we're going to have to polish it up. But it looks in pretty good shape. At least it's not cracked or broken. Interior's in good shape. A little bit dirty. And here's your little headlight switch. That's in good shape also. Here's your base. That's in really good shape. That suspension looks excellent. The base is definitely tarnished, so we're going to have to polish that up. But overall, it's in pretty darn good shape. Good deal. Let's continue on to the next step. We got the engine here. We went ahead and we drilled out the post for there, smoothed it out, and put the screw in tapped it. Same thing with the body. We drilled it, we tapped it with the Bright Vision Tap Kit. Those are looking pretty good. Now we're going to remove the paint off the body. We've got it in our citrus strip. Now again, the citrus strip you can use quite a few times before you have to throw it out. Just throw it in a little container here and cover your body with the citrus strip and then let it set for a while. You can let it sit overnight if you wish. It's not going to hurt it at all. Get the inside and the outside. You want to remove as much paint as possible. That's looking pretty good. Let's let it set for a while. Now that it's out of the citrus strip, we're going to evaluate the body here. Awful lot of toning here showing up. We're going to use some steel wool, maybe even a Scotch-Brite pad. We'll try and get out as much of that toning as possible. Let's go ahead and use that Scotch-Brite pad and just start buffing away. Now remember, if you do this too long and too much, you're liable to take off the zinc plating. So you have to be careful with that. I have done that before, trying to get out the toning and you start to take off that zinc plating. After all the sanding and rubbing, it just did not take the toning out of the car. So it looks like we're going to have to zinc plate it. Alright, let's continue on then. Here I've got my zinc plating set up. It's a mixture of distilled vinegar white vinegar and some sea salt. Now we have a power supply hooked up to it. It's set to 1.5 volts and 0.36 amps. If you look real close you can see the bubbles coming off the car. But if you don't address those bubbles they could rest on the car and you could definitely see that in your pattern when you finish your zinc plating. So I've introduced a small aquarium pump here blowing other bubbles over the car to remove any bubbles that form during the zinc plating. The aquarium pump here is very inexpensive. It's like 
eight or nine dollars or something like that. But I will be going over a zinc plating setup here in a video in the very near future. Now the aquarium pump helps remove bubbles off the zinc plating. If those bubbles form while you're zinc plating, they could show up when you finish and you'll have to buff them out. The best way to avoid that problem is to go ahead and introduce bubbles with this aquarium pump and you won't have those bubbles at the end because it releases them during the process. Now we got the car out of the zinc plating solution. That gray tone that you see is of course the zinc plating. We're going to take a brass brush or maybe some steel wool and we're going to buff it out. Now that we get it all buffed down, it's about time that we start to polish this car. Notice how though that the toning is all gone, which was our goal. Pretty darn cool. Now we're going to buff it out. I'm going to use a little bit of this Flitz polish using the Dremel with a buffing pad. We're going to buff out and make this car nice and shiny. While I'm thinking about it, don't forget to subscribe, hit the little bell down below and be alerted to when we get new videos out. Looking pretty good. Nice and shiny. Yeah, that's looking sweet. Let's continue on and wipe this down and see how shiny it is. Definitely looks a lot better than it did. Got rid of all that toning. Yeah, that's nice. Now it's time to get rid of the wax and the grease that's on there. I'm going to use this heavy duty citrus degreaser and a plastic brush or a toothbrush or something like that. Scrub the entire car down and then rinse it off with water. Don't forget that your very first coat is a light coat or a tack coat. You just want something for the rest of your paint, give it a tooth to bite on here. Go very, very light. Yeah, that's enough. Let's give it a little bit of time to dry. A few minutes later. Keep moving while you're painting. As you're painting around the car, like I said, keep moving. You don't want to paint too much in one spot because that's what causes runs. Give it a little bit. Rotate the car some. Give it a little bit more. Rotate the car some more, etc., etc. The other thing whether you're using the Nitro Flame paints from Bright Vision or you're using the Spectra Flame paints from the Redline shop, the more paint you put on, the darker it's going to get. I don't know how much I can say that. Once you get to the color you want, you need to stop. Because you can keep on painting that color and it's going to get darker and darker and darker. Now we've got the car in a mixture of lime away and water, a 50-50 mixture. Look how the lime away is eating away at the oxidation on the base and on the motor of this car. You don't want to leave it in more than four minutes. If you do, it's going to start attacking the body of the car and actually turn that chrome plated base 
black. And you definitely don't want to do that because once it goes past that point, it's going to be very hard to get it shiny again and get it back to where you need it to be. Now that we've got the base and the motor out of the Lime Away mixture, we're going to use a little bit more of that foots polish and we're going to buff up the engine and then buff up the base. It won't take very long to buff this out. Just a little bit of polishing and your project is just going to turn out that much nicer. Take your time, as I tell you many, many times during my videos. That's pretty good. I really like this flitz polish. Thank you, Paul, at Fat Guy Productions. This stuff works fantastic. This is what he uses. Good stuff. coming out real nice. Gotta be careful, you'll scratch it. Got to rub it down. Be right back to you. Now that the base is all polished up, it's time to change the tires. This particular car comes with what they call cap tires. You got your regular tires here, and it's all hollow on the inside. To take these apart, you have to get on the very edge of the tire and then take a razor and see how it pops right off, just like that. Same thing. Find the very edge. There's a high edge here. Just take a razor and run it down. Easier said than done, right? There you go. And pop it right off just like that. Okay. We're going to finish the rest of the tires and put the car back together and have our reveal. So here we are. A Hot Wheels Redline Peeping Bomb in desperate need of attention. Got a bunch of flea bites in the paint job. The chrome definitely needs to be brought back to life. And there's a lot of issues with toning. And this is where we've come to. A beautiful Hot Wheels Redline Peeping Bomb. We painted it. We polished it. We replaced the wheels. We detailed it. This thing is now absolutely beautiful and a proud member of anyone's collection. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. And again, for you folks that are visiting for the first time, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. My name is Paul with Diecast Graveyard. We got a lot more videos coming out in the very near future. Please share this with your friends also. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Cheers.